Joining me now is Mark Lauder, former special assistant to President Trump and one of the people tasked with getting the Trump-Pence ticket reelected in 2020. Sir, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, thanks for being here. Let's start with Michael Cohen. Mm -hmm. uh, what message did the Trump-Pence campaign take away from what Michael Cohen said this morning? I, I don't think they're really focused on that right now because I think there's a lot of speculation. But how can we you not be focused on we that? We don't know what he, we, we don't know, A, he's not charged with anything. B, we don't know what information he may or not, may not have that he may or may not be willing to, to talk to prosecutors about. So I think there's a lot of speculation. It's a sport right now in Washington, D.C., and I get that. But I think from our standpoint, we're well, just focused still on, a remarkable on the Supreme step Court, for economy. him to go out there and say and talk about loyalty, which, as we know, is something that the president really values, uh, and to say that he is loyal first to his family and to his country. Does the president not take that as, as, a, as a shot? Well, I haven't talked to the president directly about that, but I, don't, I think we all are loyal to our families and our country. And so right now all he did was go out there. He sent whatever message that he's hoping to send. And there's a lot of speculation about what that means. But I think, as your previous guest said, there's a lot of public relations involved. And I think we'll just wait to see how it plays out. What do you think voters are going to take away uh, from this back and forth with the president and his own lawyer? I mean, are, is this just simply going to be a question of do they believe the president over Michael Cohen? I'm not sure they're following every day like, like we do here in Washington, D.C., the, the comings and goings and who's talking and who's not. I think they're really more focused. Right now, they're probably focused on their plans Should for the 4th of July. Should it matter to the voters, though? Should this matter to voters? I mean, during the campaign, President Trump argued that somebody being under FBI investigation was, in fact, a very important thing for voters to consider. I think right now what they're focused on is is the economy, what they're doing for the 4th of July, what's coming on with the Supreme Court pick. I think those are probably the more important to them in terms of what's happening with a lawyer who's not been charged, and it's not even directly related to the Russia investigation, as this is something separate being held out of the Southern District of New York. All right. Let's talk. You mentioned the economy. Let's talk for a minute about the president's uh, tariffs. Uh, you have uh, people across the Republican Party, the Chamber of Commerce, the groups backed by uh, the Koch brothers, uh, companies, General Motors, saying this is bad for America. The, why does the president, why is he out there by himself on this? Well, I think for too long we've been sold a false bill of goods that we have free trade. When we haven't had free trade in a very long time, we've never had it. In fact, when, it, when General Motors faces four times the amount of tariffs sending a car to Europe than, they, than a German automaker to send a car here, that's not fair in free trade. And so what the president is doing is putting it on the table to say this has been unfair for many decades. We need to fix it. Presidents of both parties have talked about wanting to fix trade to make it more fair, but they've never actually done a lot about it. And so even though there might be a few bumps in the road here in the beginning and it does upset Wall Street, I think the people out there know that the president's sticking up for their jobs, the workers, and for our farmers. But many Republicans here, members of the president's own party, will say that the president is essentially threatening to wipe out all of whatever value added they got by passing a massive tax cut that they say, you know, put money back in Americans' pockets that helped, you know, juice corporate America, get get things rolling. They're saying, look, you do this, you keep, you, you, you press ahead with this, you are putting our, our midterm election advantages on the line. I don't think the American people see it that way. And I think they, they see that he's looking out for their jobs. Manufacturing jobs are growing 300,000 and counting right now. We've had 4,000 companies manufacturing factories come back to the United States in just the last year and a half. Those are the things that they see. And while there might be a short-term bump while we're dealing with this, the long-term benefit, which is what the president's focused on, will be better for American workers, better for our farmers in the many years and decades to come if we can get this fair and free on both sides. I guess we'll see what happens uh, in Iowa to see if farmers really are uh, on board with this. But uh, you also mentioned the Supreme Court nomination. Let's talk a little bit about uh, kind of the options uh, for for the president and concerns about uh, particularly Lisa Murkowski, Susan Collins, Republicans who are very concerned uh, about the precedent associated with Roe versus Wade. What is the, the kind of political view of, of how the president should go go forward with this? Does he benefit from from picking a Gorsuch style person or perhaps picking a woman? Well, I think he definitely is going to follow the model of a Gorsuch-type person, whether that is a man or a woman. It's the temperament. It's their judicial philosophy that the Constitution means what it says, not can be twisted into something that means something else. And that's what he's looking for. And that's why many conservatives voted for the president the first time around. It was very high on their priority list in the exit polls after Election Day. So we'll see. But what we know is, is that the president's going to have someone in there who respects the rule of law. We're going to see the 
Congress move or the Senate move through that process this fall. And I think it's actually in a very difficult position for the Democrats from the red states that the president won, because as Paul Begala said just a few last week, that any Democrat who votes for the president's nominee is going to struggle with volunteers and donors. So if you vote for this nominee, you lose your base. Sure, if you vote against contest. the nominee, you're going to lose the Trump voters that you need to get you reelected. And that's a very difficult position for those senators. What did you read into Chuck Schumer uh, focusing on uh, the Amy Barrett, the top uh, considered to be the top female potential choice for the president. For and while I'm not going to comment on whether she is or isn't, but I did, take, I did take note on that because let's remember when, when, the, when the judge was confirmed last October, you had three Democrats that crossed over to vote for her, uh, Manchin and uh, let's see, Manchin, Kane and Donnelly. And then you also had Senators Collins, Murkowski and McCain also voting for her confirmation. So that shows that she can get all of the Republicans and three Democrats. So that shows you that he's probably very concerned about having that pick come through. Really quickly before, before we go, on immigration, the, over the course of this weekend, we saw Americans take to the streets. And according to, to many of our, our own correspondents on the ground, a lot of people, it was their first time coming out and, and protesting the Trump administration. Meanwhile, on the Democratic side, you have an increasing call uh, to abolish ICE. The president uh, weighed in on that, saying, you know, Democrats uh, want open borders. How concerned are you, from a political perspective, going into the midterms, that the separation of these children has really galvanized Americans who may not have otherwise voted in, in a midterm election. Well, I think while that issue was very polarizing and the president has acted on it, they're now in the process of reuniting those families, the calls to abolish ICE has gone to such an extreme that I think the Democrats very much overplayed their hands. And while that message may resonate with the coasts, it is going to cost you many of the people in the Midwest where I come from who are just not going to go for open borders and eliminating our Customs and Border Patrol agents. Mark Lauder, thanks very much. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.